Senator, what's off the sidelines? Off the sidelines is a call to action to ask women to get involved in politics. It's a call to candidates to run, like Jennifer. She's off the sidelines. She's running for Congress. It's also a call to action for women everywhere to vote, uh, to be heard, to elevate their voices, and make sure that they're being represented here in Washington. Do women need to be urged to run or to vote? They do. And uh, interesting, though, in this moment of time we're in right now, they really don't need to be urged. They're running because they're so furious at what President Trump's doing. They disagree with the direction he's taking this country, and they're fighting back. And they are running, and they are running in large numbers all across the country. Uh, almost 200 women are running for Congress right now as nominees. And so it's exciting. Uh, women really do want to be heard. They want to be represented, and they want to change the direction the country's going in. Why, you're the junior senator from New York, why did you endorse Jennifer Wexton here in Virginia? Because she's making a difference. Uh, she believes that health care is a right and not a privilege. Uh, she's going to fight really hard so families can earn their way into the middle class. And we share the same values. And I believe that she's going to win because she wants to make a difference and she wants to come to Washington to get things done. Her whole uh, work life has shown that she brings people together on a bipartisan basis and gets things done. And that's the one thing we desperately need in Washington. And we've seen that from women over time, that they're very good at finding common ground, listening, building consensus and then passing legislation to help people and I think Jennifer wants to be in Congress because she wants to help people. So you're building an ally here for what you expect to happen in November? I hope so yeah and I think women everywhere um, we tend to work together uh, even across party lines. Anytime I've ever passed a bill whether it was the 9-11 health, health bill or don't ask don't tell repeal it was strong women helping me both Democrat and Republican so I think when Jennifer gets to Washington, she's going to find allies, she's going to build consensus, and she's going to pass bills. So what is a win for Get Off the Sidelines? Electing more women. And someday, we want to get 51% of women in Congress. We actually want to represent the population of America and show the diversity of America. Because when we have more women at the table, I promise you, they're going to raise different issues, they're going to offer different solutions, and we're going to get more things done. In some ways, you could look at the races right now and say, we're we're making progress. I mean, we have broken the record now for the number of successful women uh, winning and running nominations, uh, gubernatorial races, the House, mm -hmm. the Senate. Those are at the primaries. Can you maintain that momentum going into the midterm races? I absolutely believe we will. How? Well, you saw it from the Women's March. You saw millions of people march around the country to be heard, carrying signs, all issues, because they believe that this president, President Trump, is taking this country in the wrong direction. He's harming our families. He's done everything he can to undermine people's right to health care. Uh, he, he's doing everything he can to uh, make it harder for our middle class families to make ends meet and to provide for their kids. Uh, he's not taking on the drug companies. He's not taking on big business. Uh, he's lined the swamp with swamp creatures. He's doing everything he said he wasn't going to do. And this culture of corruption continues to grow under the Trump administration. And what people want, certainly in my state, and what I've heard from even your supporters here today, is they want oversight and accountability over President Trump. And they want to help people um, with the things they need to provide for their kids, basic basic things like opportunities to train for a good job, basic health care as a right, not a privilege, um, making sure that uh, they have a job if they want a job. These are really core bread and butter issues. So you draw a direct line between President Trump's election and the number of women running now? Absolutely. Based on j not demographic shifts, but just pure protest? protest, anger, frustration, and determination to protect their families. What is it like running as a first-time candidate in this particular cycle? Well, I'm not a first-time candidate. I'm a sitting state senator here in Virginia 10. So at this, at this level race, what is it like jumping in? It's exciting and it's wonderful. Uh, what we've been seeing on the ground is amazing. And we had, we had a test case here in Virginia last year because we had races for the House of Delegates in our statewides. And we flipped 15, 15 seats from red to blue in Virginia, and 11 of those were, for, were new, newly elected Democratic women. So we've already seen the energy on the ground, uh, and it has not gone anywhere. Everybody is really excited about this race. And speaking of energy, I mean, you're running in a district that's been held by Republicans since the 80s. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing in terms of your pull ahead in the polls, what do you attribute that to? I attribute it to my, my background, you know, I'm, I'm a mom, 
of kids in, in the school system. I'm a former prosecutor from the heart of the district in Loudoun County, and I'm a state senator who, during my tenure in the, in the Senate, has passed over 40 bills, every single one with bipartisan support, because I focus on issues that help kids and families, and that's what people care about. When I asked you that question, the first thing you said is you were a mom. Mm -hmm. Why do you credit that as an asset? Because so many of the, my constituents are moms, and we're all, I'm doing this for my kids. I'm doing this because I want to make sure that we create the best possible country and world that we can for them. And under the current administration, under Don, Donald Trump's presidency, I'm worried about how much damage can be done to our country in the next couple of years. Do you think that something has changed where, you know, in the past people wanted to almost play down their gender to say, don't be distracted by that, I'm just like a guy. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel comfortable saying, I'm a mom and that's a good thing? Because we bring great things to the table. As women, we are uh, able to check our egos at the door and work together to get things done and deliver results. Uh, as moms, we are able to prioritize and multitask all the many things that, that help us as legislators. And we're able to empathize and understand the issues that our constituents are facing. Do you think, though, that in this particular race, it's kind of unusual. I mean, you're a woman running against another woman here, Barbara Comstock. Does that change the dynamic of the race at all? Maybe a little bit, because we are both women, so we can't put it in that frame of a man versus a woman. Um, but when you have a woman who is not voting in a way that helps other women, uh, it's time to replace her. You know, Barbara Comstock ha opposes equal pay for equal work. She has repeatedly voted to strip uh, women and families from much needed health care. And when someone is voting that way, it's time to replace them. Mm -hmm. Does it make it harder to campaign against a woman? You know, I run my campaign as, as myself, not as a woman running against a woman or a woman running against a man. You know, I focus on my background and the many things I've accomplished and the things I want to do. What advice has the senator given you in this race? To sh Senator Gillibrand has been very helpful and, and has advised me about just being myself and talking about the issues that, that motivate me and move me uh, because people value somebody who's going to be genuine and is going to do what they say and say what they do. Ms. Wexton, I, I want to ask you, looking at some of the issues that you've been talking about, here in Virginia. This is a state that's going through a lot of changes in terms of patterns of voting. Right. MS-13 specifically um, has come up again and again at the presidential level. It's come up in your race as well against Barbara Comstock. You've accused her of fear-mongering and race-baiting. What do you think here is really driving uh, the concern about this particular gang and why did you level that accusation against her? We've seen the Republican playbook before. You know, this is what they did in 2017 in our gubernatorial race, and I have little doubt that they're going to try to trot that playbook out again. Um, Republicans don't want to talk about the fact that they don't have the political will or courage to pass comprehensive immigration reform or even look at ways to, uh, to reform our broken Im immigration system short of kicking people out of the country or, or slamming the doors on people who would come to this country. So they, they're trying to conflate uh, MS-13 with immigration. And people, this is a very diverse district, you know, we have a lot of new and aspiring Americans here, and they, they saw right through it in 2017, and I would imagine they will in 2018 as well. The Senator's been very vocal about calling for the abolishment of ICE, or at least an overhaul of it. Do you agree with her position? That's one position that I do not agree with. Um, no, I do not support abolishing ICE. Uh, I think that we need comprehensive immigration reform, uh, but ICE does good things, like you know, a lot of the human trafficking investigations uh, come through ICE, and so that's one area that we don't agree on.